So this is a very short presentation and um, so way back in May last year, I did a presentation on uh, debugging uh, using AOSP, how to debug um, uh, using Android Studio. Um, and actually it turned out to be one of the most popular um, presentations we've done so far. So um, at the time, somebody um, made a comment that the way I'm doing it is possibly not the most optimal way. So I want to follow up on that. And also I want to just mention JDB, which you might think is a crazy thing to do, but it is very nice and quick and handy to do. So here's an update. Um, oh yeah, how to do debugging without using DDMS. So why did I use DDMS, you may wonder. Um, I guess the answer is because that's the way I've always done it since the uh, uh, Android 1.5 days. Uh, DDMS is a nice little debug tool. It just kind of worked. But gradually over the years, it's, it's worked less and less well. And finally, in Android 13, it stopped working altogether, or at least I couldn't get it to work. Anyhow, so somebody explained to me that the way I was doing it was a, was a terrible way in the first place. I should have been doing it slightly differently. So just a quick recap then. The idea is that you have AOSP, which is a huge code base. Um, maybe you would like to be able to browse the code base using a graphical environment such as Android Studio. This is possible. So you just run these commands, id gen, and then um, yeah, that generates a, a script for you. Then you run the script. That's all good. And eventually, this is going to generate for you a project file, an android.ipr file. More details in that readme file at the bottom. You have to do a bit of fiddling around with Android Studio uh, to increase the memory, because once this starts indexing, the entire uh, code base of AOSP is going to consume all your memory. So increase the, at the very least, you need to increase the heap size to, size to five gigabytes, maybe more. And then you can open this file, the, the IPR file you generated two slides back. Um, you will see that it starts indexing stuff. And this takes a long time, so several hours. So just leave it chugging away <clears throat> um, and, and it will eventually finish. Every now and again, it keeps inviting you to migrate AOSP to Gradle. Um, I never actually clicked the yes button. I imagine it will go horribly wrong, so don't. Um, but once it's all finished, you can actually then browse the code using uh, Android Studio, which some people think is better than using Vim. I'm, I'm a little uncertain about that, but who am I? So that's what we got, have we got so, to last time. So the next stage then is having done all that, it'd be really nice to be able to debug stuff since Android Studio has a debugger built in. Um, so you can do this. After a little digging around and, and clicking on various things, yeah, you can do this. So if you um, go into the um, Android Studio run, there's a thing called attach debugger to Android process. It's right at the bottom of the menu. Um, and what confused me, I think, is that initially you find it's grayed out. So it's grayed out until it's finished indexing all of the files, which, like I say, takes maybe a couple of hours. So you've got to be patient here. Um, eventually, it will be enabled, and then you can then click on it. Then you see this dialog box here. You want to click on Show All Processes, and somewhere... Um, not on this dialog box, I've missed it. Somewhere there's a point where you can attach to, or you can tell it to attach to a, an external device. So in this case, it's actually running, uh, I'm actually attaching to a cuttlefish device, but it could be a physical device or it could be goldfish or whatever. Show all processes, this is, these are all the things I can, well, these are the processes, I can, I can debug any one of these. The one I particularly want to debug in this example is system process which is the debugger's name for system server. And that's basically it. Everything else is pretty much the same as before. So previously I'd done this using some weird thing using DDMS. Don't do that. Do it this way. It's easier. Um, 
But then you can navigate uh, through to the code you want to debug. In this case, um, maybe set brightness. So um, I'm set, I'm, I've clicked here, I've set a breakpoint on display device has unique UID, blah, blah, blah. Then I can resume the program. Then I go into, so this is a repeat of what uh, Dave was doing. I can go into um, the uh, settings app or whatever and change the brightness level. And we will then hit the breakpoint. And well, it's a breakpoint. Yes. So this is nice. I can now I can now see the brightness was uh, zero point two two five four one seven eight. I think. Um, yeah, I can debug stuff. So that's the uh, using uh, Android Studio. Um, another way to do it, and you might think this is weird, but I think it's quite cool, is you can do the whole thing from the command line. Um, why would you want to do this? Mostly because it just works out of the box. So I don't install any install anything. Um, the JDB is part of the JDK. JDK is part of AOSP. So you can just type JDB and it will just work. So it's a quick and easy way of doing things. Well, a quick way, anyhow, a quick and difficult way of doing things. So here's an example of doing basically the same thing. So I have my um, system. I want to uh, set a breakpoint on the set brightness function. So this time I need to know the PID of the process I want to attach to. Then I can do an ADB forward. And here I choose a suitable local TCP port number. 8700 seems reasonable. And then I connect to the JDWP thread of process 664. And then, so let's just set up the forwarding. So now I can, in JDB, I can do attach to this uh, port number, localhost, da -da, um, point it to the place where it's going to find the source code, in this case, for uh, system server. Then I can set a breakpoint. So in this case, I'm setting a method breakpoint. So I say stop in name of the method. Then I can go into the settings app, twiddle the slider back and forth, and you will see that it hits the breakpoint. What we do. Um, and once again, I can look at the brightness, for example. In this case, I can type print brightness, and it tells me it's this number. And then I can do all the other wonderful things you can do with debuggers. So yeah, I, I have found this useful in, in, in a number of occasions when I couldn't be bothered to set up Android Studio for a particular uh, debug session. And I just wanted to see if something hit that breakpoint. If it did it actually run that line of code. Um, and if it didn't, why not? So that's all, just a quick thought. Anybody have any questions about any of that stuff? Actually, uh, when, when um, I have a question about the uh, software the uh, uh, breakpoint or software the process, uh, maybe a thread uh, of Your, the system yeah. server, maybe uh, uh, does not trust the whole system. I mean, when a, ser when a service in Android stops working. Okay, um, so I've made your. your um... Your microphone is very distorted, but uh, as I understand it, you're saying if you hit the breakpoint, how much of the system is still running? So it's you can stop the process. So system server will stop dead. So that is going to stop a significant portion from uh, of Android running. You might, having said that, be able to resume the threads that you're not currently setting the breakpoint in. Not too sure about that. Um, but the, the simplest case then is that you pretty much start the whole of system server. Nothing much in Android is going to work in that case. But if I've be, been debugging something else, like maybe an application, then the threads in that application will be stopped, but the rest of the system would carry on running. So it depends. Okay, cool. Thank you.